This video is part of consumer theory. In it, I'll present a model of consumer choice under uncertainty. Let's look at a consumer who's facing a lottery. That is, there are different monetary prizes, X1, X2, Xn, that he could win, where each monetary prize could be won with some probability. P1 is the probability of getting cash prize X1, P2, the probability of getting cash prize X2, for example. Each probability has to be less than 1 and greater than 0, and all the probabilities have to sum to 1. The expected value of this lottery is the average prize or the average amount of money you'd expect to win if the game or the lottery was repeated over and over and over again an infinite number of times. The expected value is a weighted average where we're weighting each cash prize by its probability. The expected value adds up the probability of each cash prize times the cash prize. In comparison, the expected utility of a lottery is the average amount of utility you'd expect to win if the game was repeated over and over and over again an infinite number of times. The expected utility is also a weighted average where the weights are the probabilities, but now what we're weighting is the utility of each cash prize rather than the cash prizes themselves. The utility function that we're using that gives the utility for every amount of a monetary or cash prize is called a von neumann morgenstern utility function. A von neumann morgenstern utility function, or VNM utility function for short, reflects a consumer's preferences for risk. To see this, consider the following exercise. Which of the following two options would you prefer? Option one, I'll give you $3 with certainty. Option two, I'll flip a fair coin and there's a 50% chance that the coin will land on heads, and if so, I'll give you a dollar, and a 50% chance that the coin will land on tails, and if so, I'll give you $5. Which one would you prefer? Which option you picked reveals something about your own preferences for risk. If you picked option one, you are most likely risk averse. Individuals who are risk averse would avoid a 50-50 bet when possible. These individuals dislike risk and would even pay to avoid it. For these individuals, the VNM utility function increases with money at a decreasing rate. As I'll show you, this means for risk averse preferences, the utility of the expected value of a lottery is greater than the expected utility of the lottery itself. So why does picking option one mean you're risk averse? Well, remember that option one gave you $3 with certainty. With option two, there was a 50% chance of winning a dollar and a 50% chance of winning $5. So the expected value of option two was $3. For those who picked option one, option one was more attractive because how the consumer feels about getting the $3 is more than how the individual feels about the uncertain lottery itself. For risk averse people, the utility of a lottery's expected value is greater than the expected utility of the lottery itself. You can see this in the figure. Here's how a risk averse person would feel about getting a dollar. And here's how she would feel about getting $5. The expected utility where the weights are 50-50 is right in between these two utility values. And so what you can see is that knowing that you'll get $3 with certainty gives you more utility than the utility you expect to receive from option two. If you instead said that you were indifferent between options one and two, you are risk neutral. An individual who is risk neutral is indifferent to a 50-50 even bet.
Risk-neutral people are indifferent to risk and so won't pay to avoid it. Their v &M utility increases with wealth at a constant rate, and the utility they get from the expected value of a lottery equals the expected utility of the lottery itself. Finally, if you chose option two, you are risk-loving. An individual whose preferences are risk-loving would take a 50-50 bet when possible. These individuals like risk and would even pay for the opportunity to gamble. Their v &M utility function increases with money at an increasing rate. For these individuals, option two is more attractive because the utility they get from getting $3 or the expected value of the lottery is now smaller than the expected utility of the lottery itself. Now let's see how a consumer who is risk averse makes choices in the face of uncertainty. Suppose this individual starts with $9. She's then offered the following lottery. With 40% probability, she might lose $5, leaving her with only four. With 30% probability, she may not lose or win any money, leaving her with her current $9. And with 30% probability, she might win $7, giving her 16. The expected value of this lottery is 0.4 times 4 plus 0.3 times 9 plus 0.3 times 16, or $9.10. Again, the individual started with $9 and is given the choice of either keep that $9 or play this lottery. If you used expected value to make a decision here, you'd make the wrong decision. The expected value of this lottery is $9.10, which is, of course, larger than the $9 the individual started with. So based on expected value, the lottery seems like a good deal. However, expected value doesn't take into account that this person is risk averse and dislikes risk. So instead, we need to look at expected utility to make the right decision. Now let's calculate this individual's expected utility of the same lottery. To calculate expected utility, convert all the monetary prizes into utils. Supposing the utility function is x to the one-half, winning $4 is winning two utils, winning $9 is winning three utils, and winning $16 is winning four utils. Using the probabilities of each as a weight, we get an expected utility of 2.9. Remember that the individual started with $9. $9 is worth three utils to her, given her utility function. This lottery, on the other hand, has an expected utility of only 2.9 utils. So based on her expected utility, she should just keep her $9. $9 with certainty is worth more to her than this lottery, even though the lottery's expected value is more than $9. Again, to take into account risk preferences, when an individual is facing two lotteries, the individual is going to make a decision based on expected utility. The expected utility theorem says if an individual's preferences over lotteries are complete, transitive, continuous, and satisfy the independence axiom, then one lottery will be strictly preferred to an other lottery if and only if the first lottery's expected utility is greater than the second lottery's expected utility. Now, the expected utility theorem has to have certain assumptions satisfied. I'm not going to worry a lot about what these assumptions look like, but again, there are certain assumptions that have to be satisfied, but when they are, this says make decisions when faced with uncertainty by choosing the option with the higher expected utility.